Hello, this is Roof of the Clan of the Grey Wolf, and welcome again to 16-Bit Gems. Uh, if you're new to the party, then I just spent the last episode going over the history of the Earthbound series, and now it's time for my review of the actual game. Now, I know what you're asking yourself. Could this game possibly be more entertaining than a house cat set to the MacGyver theme? Yes, but just barely. I mean, <laughs> let's not go losing our heads here. I'm not going to go over my normal history of the game since I already spent half an hour doing that, but I would like to offer a correction to my previous episode. In it, I said that Mother 2, or Earthbound, was released on the Wii's Virtual Console in Japan. As I said, it has not been released on the Virtual Console outside of Japan. In fact, that hasn't happened. Now, in my defense, I was thinking of the Masterpieces section of Super Smash Bros. Brawl, which provides short samples of games whose characters are present in that game. Mother 2 was in this section in Japan, but was taken out for its American release. So the plot thickens. Why would Mother 2 still not be out on the Japanese Virtual Console? Well, there's an excellent write-up on EarthboundCentral.com that covers every possible legal problem connected to Mother 2 and music copyrights held by other parties. It's the first Google hit for Earthbound Legal. I'm not saying that these are the surefire reasons why the game has still not been re-released in either Japan or America, but it's the fan community's attempt to at least try to explain what Nintendo refuses to. And now, as penance for my screw-up, I've signed a contract in blood that states I'll sacrifice my future firstborn son to the Shigesato Itoi Shrine I have in my bathroom. My wife wasn't too keen on the idea at first, but she'll get over it. Alright! With that out of the way, let's get straight to the game. You'll immediately notice that there are a lot of options available to you at the new game screen, right down to what flavor windows you'd like. That damn mint option always puts me in the mood for ice cream. but. Beyond recollections of creamy treats, you'll get to name the four heroes, your dog, your favorite food, and your favorite thing, which becomes your main character's strongest psychic attack in the game. This is one of several opportunities in the game where the player gets to make their own imprint. Normally I'd put something here that's super witty and clever, but that almost seems like a sacrilege with this game, so I'm sticking with the defaults. The story opens in the stereotypical American suburb, Onet or Onet, depending on how you pronounce it, where a young boy, Ness, is awoken by a meteor strike near his house. After being shooed away from the scene by the local Popo, he returns home only to be awoken again by his ass-helmet of a neighbor, Pokey. It seems he lost his brother in the excitement of fiery death falling from the sky and needs help finding him. This is where you get your first taste of combat, and my god is it glorious. Ditching the heretofore omnipresent random encounter system in every RPG to this point, you can actually see your enemies on the overworld screen, and they all have their own little sprites. Yeah, some enemies may share the same one, like the Coil Snake and the Thirsty Coil Snake, but for the most part you can tell what you'll be fighting before the battle screen appears. Let's put it this way, you're not likely to confuse a New Age retro hippie with a Manly Fish's brother. And if there's an enemy you'd rather not fight right now, then just steer clear of him. Yes, this is a system that was also used famously in Chrono Trigger, but I'd like to point out that Earthbound was released months before that game, so who's cuter now? Another great innovation was the idea of surprise attacks. Normally, when meeting an enemy to begin a battle, you'll see a gray swirl on the screen. However, if a bad guy blitzes you from behind, you'll get a red swirl and he'll get a surprise action. And that whole sentence was kind of dirty, but... Conversely, if you get the jump on him, you'll see a green swirl and be rewarded with your own surprise action. I haven't heard of too many games outside of the Persona series that implement this great idea. Being able to avoid, surprise, or be surprised by enemies brings a lot of depth to just walking around. And now for perhaps one of the best ideas that no other RPG seems to have caught on to. The Insta-Win. Let's say you're a level 10 badass, you're knocking the heads off of rowdy mice and putting knife-wielding thugs in their place with ease. Now, along comes a piddling little coil snake. Do you want to waste time fighting it? Hell no, just give me the experience points and let me go on my way. That's freaking awesome! Why in the hell don't other RPGs do this? Even the sequel, Mother 3, dropped this aspect. 
It's a great way to keep all of the enemies in a particular area consistent throughout the game without having to actually waste time if you happen to run into them. Sure, you won't get rich off of the XP, but it's meant to be a time saver, not a power leveling technique. And the really funny thing is, the enemies know when you're strong enough to beat their ass mercilessly. They'll actually run from you, especially after you've beaten the main boss in a dungeon. Back at the plot, a reasonable facsimile of a bee named BuzzBuzz Buzz comes out of the meteorite and tells about all sorts of destruction that's coming in the future at the hands of the alien destroyer, Gigas. Or Gigas. Or, in the original Japanese, Giyigige. The point is he sucks and you need to stop him. Before an <clears throat> undignified end, Buzz Buzz gives Ness a soundstone so that he can travel the world to collect eight melodies that will unlock the power to destroy Gigas. Oh, just like in Link's Awakening for Game Boy, right? Well, yes, but the song mechanic, as well as the general plot outline, is actually taken from the precursor to Earthbound, Mother, which came out four years before Link's Awakening. So take that, Miyamoto! Oh, wait, no. I, I didn't mean a great one. Please, please don't smite me! Damn it. I'm gonna have to sacrifice another firstborn just to counteract that. As you travel, you'll run across three other kids who will join your party, gain levels, learn PSI, psychic powers similar to magic, and find yourself wandering around collecting these melodies in what seems to be a standard collect the MacGuffins plot. No big deal, right? Well, it's the little things during the journey that make all the difference and turns this into a classic. I've used the word quirky quite a bit to describe this game, and that's because I'm at a loss to find a better term. The writing, Strange items, strange characters, and stranger enemies all combine to make a truly one-of-a-kind experience. Shigesato Itoi's reputation as a superior wit is present in almost every part of the game. Let's focus on a few examples.